Hello everyone, it's Amy and welcome back to Budget Crafting Week 17. And this is our second episode in paper beads or homemade beads. And um, so last week I was going to try and get to showing you how to make a bead roller and I forgot, plus the video was already too long. So I am gonna show you first thing this week so that you actually can make your own bead roller if you need to. Now, the thing is, is you can just take a skewer or a toothpick or um, even a pokey tool, anything that's small and round that's gonna make you a small hole, unless you want a big hole, and you can just take your paper bead paper, whether it's the triangle shaped or a, a flat one for a straight bead, and just hold the paper um, and use your thumb to roll the paper as you go. And I'm getting a little off here, so I'm gonna kind of adjust, whoops, then I totally let go. But um, it's a little bit, it's a little bit more fiddly not really that much, but just hold the paper against the skewer and um, do your rolling. So, and you can do that to make your paper beads. And, but you do have to kind of hold your paper as you're rolling it to keep it rolling, especially if you don't have it super tight, tightly pulled on your skewer. Um, but this works well. But because you have to, you know, really hold the paper and turn the paper as you're going, it's a little harder than actually having a bead roller. So, um, I'm going to show you, but it still turns out very nice. Now it's a little off, so you can kind of do a little adjusting. Um, but, as a matter of fact, and the reason that this has blue stripes on it is because when I cut this triangle, I had used... Um, a blue pen to make my marks and um, I rolled those on the outside of the bead didn't really do that on purpose it's just how I did it um, you know when you, if you're if you draw lines on your paper to cut your beads you're not really going to be able to get rid of those lines and you don't need to if you want a totally white bead all you do is just make sure that you roll the side of the paper with the markings on it roll that to the inside of the bead and the outside will be um white but i think that it, they look cool striped like that they kind of remind me of the old blue and white um dishes my mom used to collect those so so you can just use a plain old skewer um but it's a little harder you kind of want something that's going to hold your paper so you can also do that with a plain skewer and the way that you do that is just take a skewer and just cut it mm, five six inches how long is this this is just over or just under five inches so cut your skewer and then what you're going to do is that really kind of smushed my skewer there but that's all right because that I'll just make that the opposite end so we've got our skewer, and what you're going to do is you're going to try and cut that skewer right in the middle. Now, sometimes um, you may not be able to get it in the middle, and it'll move, and you might have to go to the other piece that you cut off, cut the point off, and try it again. But um, I saw this on YouTube a long, long time ago. Now, the part that was all split up because of where I cut it and smushed it, I'm going to make that the opposite end, and I'm going to make my roller end on the other end and you're just going to take your knife and put it in the middle of your skewer and right at the very end you don't want to try and come way up here or anything and cut this way because that makes it really hard to do if you start right at the very end of your skewer and just press down what happens is that splits it most skewers are made out of bamboo and so that right there just putting that little cut there has split it all the way up to here so what you're going to do is just once you get that little split in there then i turn it around and i need to find my little split again which is right there and then what you're going to do is just kind of try and hold that down and just move your knife and you just have to move it to like wherever it's the split has stopped and then just press down on it 
and as you go it just kind of splits it and continues to split it and you want to make your split oh an inch and a half an inch and three quarters or something you want that split to be fairly long so that you can put a bigger piece of paper in it and so you just kind of move it down and like I said carefully if it doesn't split straight um, and it's and it goes off to the side and comes off then you'll need to start again but let me see how much do I have there that's an inch so I'm gonna go just a little bit further and go and your knife may kind of get stuck and you can carefully push that skewer apart to take your knife out before you put it back in again like that and now that is an inch and a half long so I'm gonna stop right there the longer you go the more chance you have of possibly splitting it off the edge so there we go now we have a split in our bead roller that's quite long. Now, if it feels kind of looks or feels rough inside, you can just take a piece of sandpaper and put it in there. Don't really pull apart on your skewer because you don't want to break it, but just put it in there and just kind of hold it and pull your um, sandpaper out. And that will kind of smooth that up a little bit. Um, you know, but like I said, you just kind of want to hold your skewer down and pull it out. You don't want to press you don't want to press apart on your on your bead roller because you don't want to split it so there we go now we literally have a bead roller then what I do is I take a piece of paper and I roll a bead so that it fits on the other end we're just going to use this one because I believe that this is what I rolled it on um, roll your bead on the skewer that you just made and I think that I did roll this on here but because you want it to be um, tight and this one I'm gonna cut just a little bit of this off I don't like how that's all frayed whenever you cut something like this you really are supposed to hold your hand over it as you're cutting it don't cut your hands um, because you want to Make sure it doesn't go flying and hit somebody or hit you in the eye. And I'm just going to sand that a little bit. And there we go. Now you can glue that right on there. I don't, and I don't for a reason. Because now we're going to roll a bead, and I'm going to show you how we roll a bead. Okay, so on this piece of paper, I've got my blue lines on this side. I'm going to make sure that I roll that to the inside so that we have a white bead. I'm going to put it between my skewer like that and then I'm just going to and I usually leave just a little bit on the end because I've got plenty of room to do that sometimes you don't sometimes your paper will be as long as your slit but and then just hold it and start rolling it and once I get it started I take this paper bead and I slide it up to here for two reasons number one it kind of holds your slit together a little bit and it also kind of gives me something a little bit bigger than the skewer to hold on to now that's why you want this bead to be tight and this is not very tight you want it to be fairly tight so it kind of you know is a little hard to move um, because then when you turn this it will turn the whole skewer um, so I am going to that's really not helping me any so I'm going to move it back out of the way and I'm just going to finish rolling this bead and I'm going to roll this bead fairly tight. And this is going to be the bead that I use on here as my little handle bead. And you can just, like I said the other day, you roll them however. A lot of times I roll them like this. Um, and like I said, I just, it's just like however I feel that day is how they get rolled. So there's no right or wrong way to do it. There's your way to do it, which is whatever works easily for you. Um, you know, we all have different, the older we get, the different wrist problems or finger problems or hand problems that we have. And so just do it however it works for you where you're not 
coming out with sore hands when you're done. Okay, so there we go. Now that's done. Don't on a wooden on a wooden roller especially, you never want to leave that bead on there because it will glue to that wooden roller. But we're going to slide this off. Okay, and I made it kind of tight, and I'm going to take this one off. And we're going to see if I can. Now I'm going to take my pokey tool because that skewer is exactly the same size as this hole. So I need to pull whenever you, you know, you have the piece that went here. So that winds up being in the middle of your hole. And I'm not sure if you can see that or not, but that piece of paper's in the middle because that's where you were holding it at. So I'm just taking my skewer and just pushing that paper over to the side. Now I'm going to try and it should be easier to put on from the other end if my skewer is the same size. And I'm going to just sand those edges a little bit because they were still kind of frayed. And bamboo does not sand really well. It likes to peel. So there, I'm going to take that little piece right off. There's another one right here because I don't want it to catch my bead. And we're going to see if I can get this back on here because I did make it really tight. But you have to take it off and put it back on because it is stuck. You know, it's it's got a piece of paper in the middle of your of your bead roller. So you can't just slide it to the other end. There we go. Now that is tighter. And so now I can push that up here and use that to roll my bead and it gives me something to hold on to. And then when I'm done, I just put it back here because I don't know exactly how much of this bead um, slit, how much I'm going to use. If I have a little tiny piece of paper here, I'm going to slide it even a little bit closer. So that is how you can make your own bead roller with just a skewer and one of your own homemade beads. Now, if you want to um, do something that's not made out of wood, I don't know where my lid is for this, so I can't stick it upside down. Um, then what you can do is show you. I've got a bunch here. Um, I think these are called cotter keys. I'm not exactly sure what they're called, but I think that's what they're called. Um, and they come in all different sizes. And I buy them in all different sizes because um, then, then I get different size lengths for making longer beads and different sizes in, you know, this one is going to make a pretty big hole. This one is going to make a really little hole. So, um, you know, so that also, um, when you buy them, it gives you the length of them and it gives you the, um, the measurement of how big this cotter key is around. And so you can just buy different sizes in how big they are around and you'll get different size holes. So, um, but you can buy these and then you can do a few things. Um, I will try and remember to link below because I don't want to take the time to do it today, but you can just take, um, um, polymer clay and you know get it squished into that hole really good so it really holds on to that so that it doesn't move and you can just take your polymer clay and make a handle and I actually wind up putting a cotter key at each end with a handle in the middle so that I actually have two bead rollers and um, and I've done a video on that before so I'll try and remember to link that below and if I don't, just remind me in the comments when you leave a comment, and I will go find it and link it below. But you can make your own with the cotter key. These work great. This is what I use most of the time. Sometimes when I first started, I just had a big one like this, a longer one, and I just did it like this. I didn't even make a handle on it. But I like the handles. It gives you, you know, something to hold on to. So um, you can do it with polymer clay. You can do it with anything you can think of. This is a sassafras tree branch. And um, so what I did was I drilled a hole in the middle. This does not go all the way through. This is just short. Just drilled a hole in the middle. Then I took my cotter key. Where's the one that's going to go in here? Here. So, and then what I did was I've got this hole here. And this hole is a half an inch thick. So down at just past a quarter of an inch, I drilled a hole all the way through this side and out the other. Took a skewer. And put it in there till it just barely came through the hole. Took this part of the cotter key, stuck it in there, put the skewer through that hole and out the other side. And then I filled this and I glued that in. 
I put glue in it as I was putting it through. Um, and then I filled the hole around the cotter key with sawdust, filled this hole with sawdust and uh, wood glue, mixed together like a paste, stuffed it in there, really packed it in well, let it dry really good. I let them dry for a few days, and then I just went in and kind of sanded the top if it was a little uneven. And now this is really sturdy. You can barely see, but there's the little peg that I put through, and there you can even see it less on this side. There it is on the other side. So just drill a hole straight through so that you can put your skewer right through here. And what that does is that really holds it. That's going to make it so that it doesn't pull out of, of here. And then this makes it nice and sturdy so it's not all wiggly and everything. And so you can make one like that, just a tree branch. You know, if you have the ability or someone who has the ability, you can just tell them that's how to do it and they can make you one. So, um, and this one has a hole on each end because actually I'm planning on making this double-sided. So, um, that's how you can make your own bead roller. And like I said, if you don't want to do anything like that, just use a plain old skewer or a toothpick. Um, they're just a little harder to hold on to. So I guess we don't need that anymore. And I got this at the Dollar Tree for a dollar. So if you see those, mine never had it, but we went to the city last week and they had some, so I bought two. Um, alrighty, so now decorating the beads is what we're doing today. <coughs> Excuse me. So these are some of the beads that we made last week. And, um, and I rolled up some of the papers that I still had left over to roll. So what I did was... Um, I painted some of the flat ones white and I left some tan. So we can see the difference of what they look like if we put something see-through on them. Now the other thing is you can just stamp on these. Just use your stamps and stamp on them um, and that works great. But I like to cover them with napkins. And so I grabbed some napkins here and we'll try and figure out what might look nice on them. Um, let's see. Now to separate your napkins. Whenever you're going to use a napkin, you have to take off the back layers. And they might be two-ply. They might be three-ply. Um, so just make sure that you get all of the layers off. Because otherwise, when you decoupage them after it dries, the top part will fall off. Um, and maybe not right away, but eventually. So I just use a piece of tape and just stick it on the back and just start pulling off that layer. And that way, you've got that separated. Now, I'm not sure this feels really thick. So I'm going to guess, and they, they really do peel off fairly easily. I don't know if this is just a super thick paper or if there is another layer. It feels like there's another layer because it's so heavy. So I'm going to try it. If I ruin this spot, I ruin this spot. I still have all the rest of the napkin, but I'm better off to try it than not um, because if it's got another layer on it and I don't take it off, I'm going to pay for it later. And it does have another layer. And that layer is attached very well. And I have to say, the cheaper the napkins, the easier it is to get um, these layers off. They don't seem to be glued on or pressed on or whatever as well. And, you know, I don't mean cheap in price. I just mean, well, usually the cheaper they are in price, the cheaper they are made. See, now I started to rip it right there. So I need to be careful, get down underneath that and get those apart. And if you'll notice, even some of the stamping on this napkin has come through to the white. So that makes that part very cool also to play with. But okay, so I am going to, because this is a very well-made napkin. This is really stuck on here. And I don't want to wreck this napkin too much. So what I'm going to do is, because we really don't need a lot right now, I'm just going to take some of this off and I will finish peeling that off later. So I just need to, I'm just going to cut it off. Maybe I can get the whole section here. There we go. Because I think the peace signs might be cool on one of them. 
and then there's the pretty flowers. When you're doing beads like this, you want to try and look for um, something, and you don't. It doesn't have to be a napkin. You can put tissue paper on them. You can paint them, stamp them, um, draw on them, doodle on them would be really pretty. Maybe black and white doodle might be pretty. Um, but you want something with a small pattern. Now you know, like you say, well, this is a really pretty flower. But you know, when you put that flower on, I'm going to put it on the top so you can just see it's only going to get that little tiny bit just right there. That's not going to be that pretty. And so even if you go for the center of this one, you know, you're going to get a little bit more. That's not too bad. But, you know, you have to remember that, like if you do this little blue one, see, you could fit that whole thing on the bead. So that would be prettier to me, um, depending on what you're looking for. You might want just kind of something abstract. So let's see. I think to start with, I really like these flowers too. And I'm going to go with this portion in the center because that's where there are a lot of flowers. And so what I'm going to do is just use water glue. Water glue is one part water to two part white glue, um, PVA glue. Um, here in the United States, we call it Elmer's glue mostly. And Elmer's is a name brand. School glue whatever you want to call it. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just cover my butterfly with the water glue. And then I'm going to, because I can see really well, this way I'm going to kind of choose to put it there. Okay. And now that I've got it on there, I'm just going to cut around it a little bit. Okay. And then we're just going to put the water glue on the top. Whoops. Now what you can do, if you want this to wrap, you can go ahead and put glue on the edges also and then just kind of wrap it around there now you may need to because this is way up there i'll need to kind of cut it so that it doesn't rip where i don't want it to rip just go ahead and cut it and fold that around like that now a lot of times what i do and we'll do that with the with, we'll do one of the other ones, um, is I just rip it off at the edge. I don't wrap it around the edge. But it's whatever you feel like doing at the time. But I thought I would just show you how to do this in case you do want to do it. And you don't have to fold it over the edge here like this you can leave it hang up there and then take it off when it's dry don't try taking it off while it's wet um it rips so much easier if it's wet i'm gonna cut it there and there and there just to kind of make it so that it will wrap into those areas And see, now I actually pulled it right off the, because you need to take your time with this and not do it too fast. I pulled it right off the antenna there. When I was pushing it like this, I just did it there too. So I am going to not mess with it too much. Once your napkin gets wet, you can't play with it too much. What you need to do is let it dry and go back in and fix it later. And so then what you can do is just go in later and anywhere where the white is showing, um, just put another little tiny piece of napkin. I've got some white showing there, over here, and then on the antenna. So I'll just go back in later and just take a little teeny tiny piece of that napkin and just stick it in those places. Okay, and then I want to just put a little bit of water glue over the whole top. 
Whenever you're decoupaging something, it's best to put your water glue on the top and the bottom. It's totally optional, um, but to me, you get the best seal that way. So there we go. I am going to leave that just like that. And we'll let it dry, but see how bright those colors are? Just so vibrant. Now we're gonna do the same thing. And I'm gonna use the same napkin, um, but I'm not gonna have quite as much flowers on it because I'm gonna use a different area. But we're going to put it on this one that is not painted white, just so you can see the difference of if you paint them white or if you leave them the natural color. I'm gonna get as many flowers as I can. That's about the best we're gonna do there, but. Let's see my scissors, they're right here. Now, also, if I wanted lots of flowers on here, I could put pieces of this napkin in the different areas instead of leaving it whole like this, which really, I've only got this one part here that's that doesn't have the flowers on it. All right, now this one I'm not going to wrap around the edge. I'm going to leave it just like it is. Because I'll show you how to do it if, or what to do with it when it's dry. But also look at the difference in the vibrancy of those flowers. Vibrancy. Alrighty, so I'll be back in just a second. Okay, I am back. And so I dried these a little bit. So hopefully by the time that we're done, um, we'll, I'll be able to show you how to get the extra off of there. But I also wanted to show you how this is like an all over pattern, but you don't have to just do it that way. You can also choose a focal point. So I want to, I, there's a flower here that fits, that will fit on this oval really nicely. So I'm just gonna kind of tear around it a little bit so that I have just the flower. This napkin has already been separated. I think, I better take a second look at that to be sure. Actually, is it or isn't it? Oh, that's folded over. Okay, yes, it has been separated, okay. So I like this little flower right here. And so I'm gonna put that flower on my bead See, how does this, either way. I was looking at my hole to see if that mattered, but with the flower that I'm looking at, it wouldn't matter because it depends on what I'm gonna hang the bead on. So then I'm just gonna actually take that flower and carefully kind of line it up and put it right where I want it. And there we go, so we've got that. I'm just going to put a little coat of the water glue on top to seal it. It also helps brighten it up just a little bit. This does shine, this dries pretty matte. It does not dry shiny. But, and I chose the white one to put this on because I really wanted to see that flower. And it looks really nice. So we'll fix that one up at the end too and get off the excess. But I don't really mess with them much while they are um, wet because what happens is it just tends to tear so now also the one thing that I, I love to cover these types of beads the dome beads and the flat beads I like covering those with napkin I think it just really looks very pretty and since we've got this napkin out I'm going to kind of go for this orangey area here and put that on my dome bead and you can choose to um, hold on to it with a skewer. Do I have one here with a point on it? Just kind of hold on to it so that it's easier to deal with. Put it, just put it on a skewer or a toothpick or something. And then you're just going to put the water glue all over. Make sure that you get on there really good because you've got those kind of ridges from pushing it up. 
get that on there well and then I'm just gonna take this and kind of center it on there because my skewer is actually sticking out I'm gonna have to push it through the skewer like that and then just take your time and work it down so that you don't get a whole ton of wrinkles on it You can kind of work it where you want it. It is going to wind up, because this is circular and it's domed, it is going to kind of pleat a little bit. But if you take your time in doing it, you can kind of make it look the way that you want it instead of like a great big gob here or there or something of extra napkin. So that's the dome part, but now I also need to get to the flat part. I wasn't sure if there was um, glue under there, but obviously since I can't pick it up, there is. Okay, and so there we go. Now we can just let this dry. And the biggest thing is you've got paper and paper. So, you know, it's going to soak up the water in the glue, the glue. So it's very damp. Let it dry. You know, do a bunch of them all at one time. And just, you know, give them their time to dry nicely before you start you know trying to cut off the edge on the bottom now I could if I wanted to flip this upside down and just put the napkin on the inside which on this one I'm gonna leave it like it is because I think I'm gonna paint the inside with a color and so when this is dry I will use a file and I will file along the edges to get off all of the excess napkin and again stop playing with it um, and then I have a piece of styrofoam. I'm just going to stick that skewer in and let that dry. Hopefully I won't forget it's there so I can show it to you at the end. And again, the same thing with these flat ones is great too. And you can use napkins to wrap around your flat beads or your shaped beads. It doesn't matter. But I also like to use, I'm going to use this piece I think. I like to use fabric. And so this bead is this long. So I'm just going to rip this fabric at that spot. Fray it up just a little bit. See if I can fray this side a little too. That side's not wanting to fray very well. It, that side was cut, so it's not necessarily straight. When you rip a piece of fabric, it will rip on a straight line. Um, so when you cut it, you may think you're cutting it straight, but you're not necessarily cutting it straight. And then it doesn't necessarily fray as well either. But what you have to do is get to the end where you can see the fray on one of the ends, where you, and then try and grab a hold of one of those threads. But that one does not want to come out, so we're just going to leave it. Okay, so that is pretty much the, the width of my bead. And then I'm just going to see what length I need. So I'm going to wrap this around here and say I need to rip it right where they come together. Or cut it, whichever you prefer. It really doesn't matter. You get those extra strings off of there. And then we're going to do it the same way. Water glue it. And just stick it on a skewer. You can stick it on your pokey tool. Whatever is um, easiest for you. It's just easier to hold on to it to do it this way. I think this is the way that I did it. I just want to make sure that I'm covering up the white part of the bead. And you can do this on a colored bead. I've showed you how to make colored beads so that you don't have any white left over. Um, put a little extra glue on the fabric because the fabric has been painted it's a little bit stiff so that's just going to help it hold better and wrap it around there like that now we have a fabric bead and I'm going to just put the 
water glue also on the outside. As the water glue um, soaks into the fabric a bit, it's making the fabric a little less stiff because this fabric, this piece of fabric was very stiff um, because it has acrylic paint on it. And so sometimes you need to just kind of hold it a little bit until it really grabs hold. <laughs> and it doesn't want to grab hold, but it will. And like I said, we've got... And you can use regular glue for this also. Um, if, if it wants to be super picky and fussy on you, um, you can just put a little bit of regular glue on there to hold it down. If you don't want to, you know, just continue to kind of hold it and press it, or if it just absolutely refuses to pay attention. Which this one is really just wanting to continue to peel off. So that's a good thing that that happened so that I can just show you. We'll just glue it so that if it happens to you, you're not like, well, that's not what happened to her. I'm just going to take a little bit of this glue. This is the glue from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to put that in there. Now, that may also not want to hold super, super well right away because now this piece of fabric is very wet. Um, you know, because I got it wet with the water glue. So what I will do is I'll just pay attention. And I will, you know, just go back in and every so often between beads, just, you know, give it a push to make sure that it's stuck back on there. And if it peels up a little bit when it's all dry, then I'll go back in and um, put some more glue on it so let's see here I'm gonna just show you so this one is um, just a regular piece of paper with the blue lines on it from the fact that it um, I had drawn the triangle with a blue pen and then I have one here that I did and this one is just purple marker on a regular piece of paper. And then I put um, diamond glaze on both of those. And so that's what that, I put diamond glaze on all of these. This is a piece of, um, ooh, that one really stuck. And depending on what you're using, like the diamond glaze is very, very sticky or whatever, solid, I guess you might want to say. And um, so... That one really stuck on there a little bit. But see, I don't know if you can see the shine, but they have a really nice shine to them. And here's a few. I'm going to take these off of here because I want to have my paper clips ready to go. So this one is napkin with the diamond glaze on it. And then these are magazine pages with the diamond glaze on it. So the diamond glaze is very cool. And um, when I first found it, it was a, actually it was the very first time I ever even found YouTube. There was a girl that made uh, bracelets and beads and stuff and she made some beads and she used this diamond glaze. Now I couldn't find this at any of my local craft stores. So I wound up having to order it online. Um, I don't know if you can get them now or not, but it works well. But I did find um at michael's they have one oh, i can't remember what it's called but michael's has like a clear coat of their own and it worked really well too so it's just a clear coat of any kind you know when you see people use things if you can't find it don't go pay big bucks somewhere for it look around and see because what i normally do and the only reason i pulled that out is because i have it and i need to use it so um you know, now that we're not doing this series where I can only use what we bought for the series, I am going to use some of the things that I have. But some of those things I bought at a time when it was like, oh, I have to get this. And I really hadn't thought about replacements. So if you want something and you can't find it or you want it and it's expensive, think about what could replace it. So I'm going to put this on my, on my um, 
paper clip and just hang it up in my bead box, which I showed you those last week. But um, but yeah, because to me, um, my replacement for that and what I normally use, but like I said, I'm going to use that now because I need to use it before it goes bad. And that's the thing, you know. I mean, I spent money on it. Just trying to find my lid for the techie glue. Um, I spent money on it. I really need to use it. So, but I normally use clear fingernail polish and it shines them up just as nicely. So, um, and dries fast because some of the things that you use, like you got to wait for them to dry, like glossy accents, you have to wait forever for it to dry. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with glossy accents. I do use it, but you know, sometimes I'm just too impatient. So, um, you know, the other way is um, to do your beads is nail polish, which is another one of my favorite things to do. I get my nail polish at the Dollar Tree. Actually, this one, I got two of them. I got these two, which are really both really pretty, and they were in the same package for a dollar. So I don't buy expensive nail polishes, and if you think that you have to because, you know, they've got the color or whatever, just keep your eyes open at the cheap nail polish things because there's no point in buying expensive nail polish for this. Um, regular nail polish works just as well. But just take the nail polish and paint it on your beads. And sometimes you need two coats, especially since this is a white bead. Um, you know, the white might want to show through. Don't forget to do the ends of your beads. And because this is a white bead, it's going to have a white center. And once you get the center that color, it's really hard to do anything about it. Um, so, you know, if you think that you don't want a white center, just kind of think about that and color that center in before you roll your bead. And I, you know, I showed you in the last video how to do that. And actually, I'm going to show you, um, the black beads that I, that I got stuck on my skewer. Um, I'm going to show you how to do those. So that'll remind you how to get your center colored. So there we go. Now we're just going to set that aside and let it, and let it dry. And if, um, there we go. And if it needs a second coat after it's dry, if I think it needs a second coat, I'll put one on there. So, but I have, let's see where, here's some of those that I made. So I just put them on this string just to keep them all together. But so I made, and they're almost like the size of a perler bead. That's just one piece of shredded paper um so I just did them in different colors and then I made one of the shaped the triangle beads like this and I did it in marker in colors that I thought kind of matched what I had there and then I think I put diamond glaze on that one too the only reason I did was because I didn't have my clear nail polish out yet so um and these were already shiny so I wanted that to be shiny but so those are those little tiny beads and, you know, they're just so easy to make. Roll up one piece of shredded paper and then paint them whatever color you want. And that's the thing. You can make them at your journals. Um, you know, you can, um, you know, do, there's lots of things you can do with them. Another thing that I like to do is with the flat bead. Let me show you the black beads first so I don't forget. I see one sitting there. Okay. So, to make the black beads, and put this in my water. Okay. To make the black beads that I showed you. Um, they were black and had a brown stripe on them. So what you're going to do is, um, those are straight beads, so you needed just a straight piece of paper. If you want it triangle shaped, then you just make it triangle shaped. But what you need to do is, on one side of your paper, color in one end. All, that's all you have to color is just that one end. That's going to be the inside of your bead. Then flip the paper over and put color on each edge just so that um, the edges are covered and make sure you actually get the edge of the paper. And you need barely anything on here because this is going to roll up straight. So if it gets off just a little bit, that just kind of gives you a little bit of leeway. And then at the very end, you want to put black at the end. But because I wanted a brown stripe on each end, I colored a brown, a little bit of brown, then black, and then brown. And you want this to be a little bit wider to just to make sure that this is going to be big enough to go around the outside of the bead. The rest of it can stay white because nobody's going to see it. And so then you just take your bead roller. And remember that 
this is the inside of the hole this is the inside of the bead so that's the way that you want to roll it and so we're just going to roll it that way just kind of make sure that you kind of keep it straight straighten it a little bit it's getting off so I'm just going to kind of scooch it back over and when I get to the end I can push it all so that it's straight we're just going to keep on rolling till we get to the end and then I'm going to kind of straighten it up a little bit put the glue on it and make sure that because I know that I want to make this straighter after I get the glue on this bit as soon as I roll it I'm gonna to want to take it off of here and straighten it out so that you know straighten the ends okay so that's holding now so I'm gonna take it off and then that one's kind of indented this one kind of sticks up so I'm just gonna take it press it on my table Turn it over the other way, press it on my table. And you might want to do that a couple of times. But that just makes your ends straighter so that you don't have one end sticking out and the other end with a dent in it. Got some white paint off my hands for some reason. And there we go. There is our black bead. And I love to make black beads and then use some type of a... I'm just making sure that that's stuck well. Um, use some kind of a, let's stick this in here to hold it. And then we're gonna use this metallic marker. That's what I was trying to think, metallic marker. And and make some kind of a of a pattern on my beads. So it doesn't have to be like an, an actual pattern or whatever, you know, you just do it however, um, just however you want to, but and I love to do that with a metallic marker. And then when the metallic marker is dry, then I go in and um, put clear fingernail polish on it. But I think that they just look so beautiful. And there we go. So this is the pattern. This is the way that the bead looks. And then we'll put clear nail polish on it, and um, it will look really good. So here I've got a little spacing difference than over here, than over here. Um, so here's the thing. It doesn't matter. It's a bead. Nobody sees all sides of the beads at one time anyways. So, but that's how I make black beads, and I love black beads. Here's another one here, and I just think that they're beautiful. So... That's how we make those. Now, um, I want to show you how to make a little a hairy bead. I think these are fun. And this comes with a certain type of yarn, but you can try it with anything that you have if you don't have this type of yarn. Um, you know, yarns, I think they come and go. So if this is not popular anymore, keep your eyes open at thrift stores because then you're going to find it really cheap. When it was popular, it was probably quite expensive. But also, here's one that's kind of like that also. This was a piece of fabric, and I just ripped the fabric, and then one side of the fabric, I really, really put um, the, you know, I really shredded the edges, you know, and so I pulled off a lot of pieces of string so that I had this much of the fray. And then I just used that to wrap around here. So it was like fray on one side and then fabric at the top. This is basically like that. It's just kind of all fray and then held together at the top. So I'm just going to cut a piece of this and now use a tube bead to do this. My, you know, our own homemade tube bead. Put a little bit of glue around the top to hold it. And then 
And you don't want too much glue because if your glue, if you have a ton of glue, what happens is it's very slippery and it doesn't dry really fast. So you want just a little bit so it's really quite tacky. And then I'm going to take this yarn or fibers, I guess maybe you would call them. And whoops, we're going to start at the bottom and go up. And the reason being is, if we started at the top, like this, and wrapped around, we would wrap over top of our phrase. So it would just be flat. So if you start it at the bottom, with the phrase hanging down, like this, and then we're going to just kind of do it at an angle. We're going to go up the bead at an angle. And I'm going to put a little bit of glue, not even necessarily all the way around. Just want it to like catch each wrap as it goes. So I'm just going to wrap this a little higher than the last one and just keep coming a little bit higher each time. Just have it on that angle. And I still have glue there, so. Don't need to worry about that. Pretty soon I'm going to have to put a little more. That's about as high as that glue goes. I'm going to hold it at the bottom. And put the glue up here. And we're going to wrap this around. Just like this till we get to the top. I think that I've answered all the important phone calls this morning, so I will check that in a while. Now when I get to the very top, I do want to put the glue all the way around. Because you want it to hold all the way around there on that last top piece. I'm just going to line that right up with the top. Just like that. Until I get to the other, until I meet up with the other side. Now right there, it's, we're going to overlap it just a little touch, so let's put just a little bit of glue right there just to, to catch that overlap part. Because the glue is underneath where we glued it right there. And then we're just going to snip off that little bit of extra. And that little bit of extra you can use in a cluster. I love to make fabric and button clusters. Well, for some reason, I'm not cutting it. There we go. And there we go. Now the other the other thing is is that you don't want to and the reason that I don't um put glue everywhere is I don't want to take the chance of gluing all of this down, but also you want to be careful about having glue on your hands um and getting it all over your your fluffy parts. But so there is a fuzzy bead and I really love the way that these turn out. And like I said, if you don't have this type of yarn, dish, just shred a piece of fabric, which I don't know how well I'll, I would be able to do this one because of because it's been painted. But let's see if I can get this to shred. So you just continue doing this. And the more that you do it, and when you do this, you have to grab like one piece. Yeah, this is so painted. You need to grab just like one piece of the thread because if you grab two, they're woven like this. One goes like that, and the other one goes like that. So if you're trying to pull two of them, they're pulling on, on what they're woven around. So you really have to try and just grab one, and if, you know, if, if, you, eh, if you've grabbed two, it will fight you. And so then, you know, you'll know to maybe stop and just grab just one. But you just continue going until you get a really long piece of a fringe on the edge of your fabric. You could you can do this all the way from here all the way to here if you want to. So, you know, if you say I don't have that fringy kind of see the fringe there? And that started out with pretty much no fringe. So um that's how you can make your own. Just have a long strip. That was probably six inches that I used, maybe eight. Have a long strip of fabric that that much and just fringe it to however much fringe you want hanging down. 
Okay, so we use clear fingernail polish to clear coat our beads. Why am I trying to stick that in there? It's hard to stick a bead roller back into a bead because they have the slits and everything. Uh, but I use pokey tool a lot of times to hold on to my beads in that way. Well, I don't have any strength in my hands right now. There we go. Got it. Phew. No, I don't know if I shook it or not. Okay. So just clear fingernail polish will really shine up a bead nicely. So we're going to end again. Um, now the ones with the diamond glaze have two coats of diamond glaze on them. So if you put one coat of nail polish on your beads and go, well, that's not as shiny as those diamond glaze ones were. Put another coat of clear nail polish on it after it dries. So the more coats of any kind of a clear coat you put on something, um, the shinier, more glassy it will look. Because the first coat a lot of times likes to kind of soak into the paper. Although I do have to say that I find the nail polish seems to stay much more glossy than other clear coats that I have used. Like I tend to almost always have to use two clear, two coats of other clear coats versus one coat of nail polish to be about the same. So there we go. That's what the nail polish looks like. But it's not dry, so that's not necessarily fair to say, look how glossy that is, but it will still be pretty glossy when it dries. And if it's not as glossy as I want it, then I put another coat on it, but I do think it still looks really nice. So, have I done everything that I thought that I was going to do? Um, metallics are really fun to use, and you again, you don't have to buy expensive metallics. These Sargent ones I got on clearance somewhere, and they're really nicely metallic, but I'll tell you what, these ones right here, these came from the Dollar Tree, and they're really nicely metallic. So, um, I wonder how dry this is. So, you don't have to you know, buy something that's expensive in order to to get what you're looking for. Look around and just see, you know, what, what you can find at the Dollar Tree or what you could find at Walmart or what you can find on clearance at the craft store. So it's hard really to see how metallic this is on the white. It shows up better on black. But, you know, like I said, these came from the Dollar Tree. And they work just as well as the other ones that I have. And I will guarantee you, even buying the ones on clearance, these were more than likely... No, I know they were cheaper because this, this was a pack of two for a dollar. So I wound up with like four colors. But I think that, you know, now granted, you don't always get all of the options of color and everything when you do something like this. But I don't know if you can see that, but it is nice and glossy. I wonder how this would look on the black. Let's see if that makes it look any more glossy. It's a little too close in color to show up. So I don't know if that's even showing up at all. Let's see what the gold looks like. Let's put some little kind of polka dots on here, I guess. There we go. And I don't know if you can see the gloss on that, but it is glossy. So, and then, you know, you just do it. You know, that doesn't show up really well on the brown because they're too close to the same color. But just remember to look around. If there's anything that you think that you would like to 
like you want a product, but you really can't afford it, or you just don't want to pay that price, uh, let me know. And I'll see if there's a way that we can figure out how to do it ourselves more reasonably. Okay, another thing, flat beads. Whenever you're making the, the beads with a flat side like these ones here. Um, if you just take them and take a fingernail file, a piece of sandpaper, um, and just give them a nice rub, then it flattens that out. And it makes it not look as much, especially once you paint it, it doesn't look as much like a paper bead as if you just leave it the way that it is. It also makes a flatter surface to go ahead and do your painting and stuff on. So let me, actually I'm going to like do just this one side. Okay. And of course it fills in the hole, you just like take the dust out of the hole. But, so this is very nice and flat now, and this is what it started out like. So that is the nice thing, you know, to be able to do that. You don't have to do it. It's just something that I like to do, especially if I think my bead's going to be seen on the ends. If they're going to be together, you know, one right after another, and you're not going to see the ends, then mm, maybe do it, maybe don't. Um, but if you know that it's going to be something, let's say you're going to put it on a project or something, and you know that those sides are going to be seen, it just makes it look more finished. So I was going to show you also the way to get rid of the, and this is not quite dry, but we're going to hope it's dry enough, um, the way to take your napkin off after it's dry. And you really do want it to be good and dry, but just take a fingernail file and go along the edge. And, you know, you need to do it like a few times. Don't try and just rip it. Um, you know, as you go, it will rip through those fibers, and it gives you a really nice edge on your bead. Because if you try and cut it with a pair of scissors, a lot of times you wind up with a little bit of, of paper still sticking out because your scissors don't actually get right up next to the bead. And then you try and rip that off, and then sometimes you'll rip some of the paper off the bead, or it will look jagged. So this way, it cuts it, and it makes it nice and smooth on that edge all at the same time. And I'm just going along the corner of the bead, not the flat side, just along that top, the top edge of the oval. There we go. And then again, this is something that before I actually um, put the white on here, I probably should have sanded these edges because you can kind of see those edges a bit, like you can see the layers a bit. But there we go. So that is what that looks like. And it looks nice and smooth around the edges. And that's what I would do with the other butterfly. Oh, here is again, just go along the edges, be very patient with it and it will turn out nicely when you're done. So you just take your time to do it and it comes off really nice. You get a really nice edge there. And this is something if you do a whole bunch of beads, well, it would depend on if it would drive your anybody else in the household crazy, but you know, you could just do this kind of at night when you're watching TV also. Just kind of sit and because with some of them, you don't really even have to, like, pay close attention. You can just be looking at the TV and it's kind of running that along the edges. Some of them, like this one that's a little more detailed, you might have to pay a little more attention to. But let's get off this little bit right here. And, of course, the antennas are going to be not as easy to do. And you're going to want to be careful with them. And you don't want to go back and forth. You want to just go away from your paper so that you don't lift that back up again. And these ones, I might trim them a bit be, and then go in and kind of clean them up with this. But there we go. From this to this. And it looks very nice. And then the difference between a white background and a cardboard background. Now granted, you know, we've got the purple on here, but look at the flowers next to the flowers big difference. The white really makes everything pop. The the regular um, 
cardboard color makes everything a little more muted and it depends on what project you're doing some project this is perfect some projects this is perfect so you just kind of think about which way you may want it so there we go what do we have here we have napkin covered flat beads and we have our black beads these are made with them um, magazines so remember this one is the markers from the Dollar Tree and I don't know if you can see the shine on that on that one but um you know it just there's so many different ways that you can make your beads so many ways to decorate them but for me nail polish and napkins and fabric are pretty much my go-to um whenever I'm decorating a bead and I love the fuzzy beads I think that they're very cool I think they look great on a dangle but even the types of paper that you use um, really can make a difference. So where do you go? come from? But, you know, there are just so many different ways that you can decorate your beads once you get them made. And so many different types of beads that you make. And um, I'm not sure if we'll be back to do boho beads. Don't forget, you can make your own um, bead rollers too. So, um... I don't know if I'll be back next week to do boho beads. I had someone ask for a project that is a simple project, um, but I think it would be great for everybody just to have that maybe have that product for Christmas. So I think that I might do that one next week, and then we'll come back to boho beads um, at another time. But these look great with boho beads and making really long because if you want your boho to be to be longer, making longer um, straight beads, which is just since that's maybe an inch, you know, make a two inch piece of paper and roll it. Um, and if you find that it's too hard to roll something that big on your bead roller, um, that's when skewers come in handy to roll a really large piece of paper if you don't have a really large um, bead roller. So just to keep both ends kind of even at the same time so but thank you very much if you have any questions or anything just let me know I love the way that um, all of these beads come out and I just think that they're super fun to make this one is um, nail polish and look how shiny that is and that's why I like the nail polish the nail polish almost makes these beads look like they're glass or acrylic or something like that so um you know, I just really think it's fun to make even, I showed you how to make different color cores last week. And um, yeah, if there's any questions that you have, just let me know. I really appreciate you stopping by. Thank you very much. And I hope that you all have an outstanding day. Bye-bye.